Welcome back to my channel. I will be discussing a topic today that is not well received in the gig community, and that's okay. Um, I will be talking about acceptance rate affecting the quantity and quality of orders that you're getting. So stay with me for a second. Um, I've been working on keeping my acceptance rate over 80% for the last couple weeks. I know that this is not a well-embraced practice by the majority of the gig community. A lot of drivers subscribe to the cherry picking method. I know acceptance rate is something that only a small minority of the gig community focus on. So specifically to DoorDash, um, as everyone has experienced when we reach out to customer service, we are talking to someone who really doesn't have a vested interest in the company. It is literally a customer service agent. And I would say for 99.9% .9 of us, um, that's the only level of communication other than maybe some emails that we ever have with anyone in the company. And that leads me to my next point of DoorDash drivers basically just being a cog in the wheel and the algorithm being set up to evaluate us. We are never given access to an annual evaluation. We're never given access to a manager or anyone with a vested interest in the DoorDash company. Literally our evaluation that we are experiencing as a driver is solely based on our statistics. And if I were to build a company solely based on statistics with no interaction with my employees or my independent contractors, and the only method of measurement was looking at statistics and basing things on an algorithm, I would want drivers that are um, showing through the algorithm, showing through statistics, that they are reliable. And those obviously would be drivers with a higher acceptance rate, which says, you know, they are willing to take the orders, deliver the orders, and drivers that are completing those orders, and of course, customer feedback or customer rating. So just in a nutshell, um, if you're building a company that's based on an algorithm and that's the only way to measure your drivers, you would wanna make sure that customers that are spending a lot of money on orders, tipping well, and are repeat customers would be serviced by drivers that look reliable in the statistics. Now, this isn't to say that you are an unreliable person if your statistics um, show the cherry picking method where your acceptance rate is lower, or your completion rate is under the 95% as a person. But as far as the algorithm is concerned, which is the only way that you're being evaluated, you don't appear to be as reliable of a driver. And so if I'm trying to make money as a company, I would want my reliable drivers servicing customers that I want to come back again and again and again which again, are people who place high paying orders, who tip well, and are repeat customers. And that's why, in my belief, um, drivers with higher acceptance rates are offered the high paying orders over and over again because they are proven to be the most reliable drivers. So on to today, um, I have had an 80% acceptance rate for about a week and a half now, and I have seen a complete change in the quality and quantity of orders. Um, I will say that at 70%, I do get pretty good orders on a regular basis, but now at 80%, I'm just really not getting any garbage orders. Hopefully I don't jinx myself today. I'm about to get my day started, but I want you to come along with me. Um, I'm starting my day with an 83% acceptance rate, and I'm just gonna evaluate the quality of orders that I'm getting today with an acceptance rate over 80%. 
I waited four minutes. I took the first offer that I was given. It's not the greatest, but it is majority freeway miles. And so I went ahead and took it. Um, as you can see, the drop off is very close to the restaurant. So we're headed to McDonald's for what should be a quick and easy $6.75. McDonald's order dropped off and by the time I got back in my car before I even moved my car I got my next order subway six dollars 1.9 miles it's 9 23 a.m. about to go get this subway subway dropped off it's 9 30 um, so that's two orders in 25 minutes. I'm sitting at $12.75. I will say that 9.30 to 10.30 is usually the slowest time in my market during the shift that I normally work, which is 9 to 1.30. Um, so I drove about a mile back towards a grocery store. And as I was driving back, I've already picked up my next order. It is for 2.1 miles to Jamba Juice. Jamba Juice is literally right here. Um, it's now 9.37 and I'm about to go get this next order. Jamba Juice dropped off and I'm already on to my next order, a two item shop and deliver for Safeway. It's 9.56 a.m. I logged in at 9.09, .09, so this means that I have received and accepted four offers in my first hour. And I will say, when I was sitting in the 70% um, AR range, acceptance rate range I was waiting a lot longer than this especially for this time frame between 9 30 and 10 30 for offers to even come in and as you can see other than my very first offer that I took just to get the wheels of the car turning um, every single order that I have been offered has been three dollars per mile plus um, and so obviously that's a great thing keeping the mileage low so I am headed over here to Safeway to get these two items 2.1 miles for this offer eight dollars and either 25 or 75 cents I'm almost here to Safeway that Sun is bright today it is 45 degrees here in Sacramento again 9:57 a.m. out of the store super quick sun is bright today I love it putting my stats up to show you how quickly I made it in and out of the store and here's a pro tip for you let me jump in the car really quickly pro tip review your shopping list before you enter the store I do this every single time. It orientates myself with where I'm going to be going, how I should navigate the store, and what items I'll be picking up. And even though there are usually aisle numbers listed on these shop and delivers, if you mentally kind of prepare yourself of where you're going to be going in the store, it makes your shop so much quicker. This one was only two items, so it was quick anyway, but I already had the mindset of where I needed to go. So let's go get this dropped off. I am three minutes away from the customer. Safeway dropped off. Dropped off at 10.08, which means I have been on the clock for 59 minutes, and that is dash time not active time so I've been logged in for an hour and in my first hour I made $28.50 which is good I always shoot for $30 an hour but I'm always satisfied with $27 so hitting this $28.50 in my first hour is great um, as soon as I got back in the car I hadn't even buckled my seatbelt yet headed back to Safeway $15.50 for 6.1 miles, six items. I will check back in with you after the shop. 
So I was able to finish that shop relatively quickly, even with the substitution that I processed for the customer. However, the wait in line was long and uh, <laughs> I'm very familiar with this Safeway that I'm shopping at right now in the Natomas area of Sacramento. And sometimes in the morning they only have one actual checker and then they're kind of funneling everyone else to go through self-checkout. Another pro tip, if you are a driver in California, um, DoorDash waives the tax on shop and deliver orders. So if you are shopping for only food items, none of those have tax in California, you can go through the self-checkout. However, I had carpet cleaner and petroleum jelly in my order, which both are taxable items. And the only way to get that waived is to go through a regular checkout. And this guy needs to retire. Not gonna say anything mean about him, but I think his speediness for his job has expired. And sometimes in the morning, when he's the only checker, the line is extremely long and it takes forever because he's very slow. So I was in Safeway longer than I would like to be, not based on the shopping, but based on waiting in line. It's 10.34, I'm headed to the customer for drop off. We should be heading into the lunch rush shortly after this drop off. I have declined zero orders so far today. Everything that I've taken has made sense to me and it's been one order right after the next. So again, I believe this 80% acceptance rate for what I was experiencing prior to 80% is definitely increasing my quality and quantity of orders. Safeway order dropped off in a brand new neighborhood in Natomas. Got all types of uh, construction trucks in this neighborhood. Let's see. Let me pull over for a second. Order dropped off at 1042. So that means I was online from 909 to 1042 and I made $44. I'm on a pause, I need to go gas up. I have uh, 67 miles left in my range and you never know what this lunchtime shift will bring. So let me go gas up and then we'll log back in for the lunch shift. Should be a little bit before 11 and then going until 1.30. All gassed up, $40 worth of gas now gives me a full tank. Not even six months ago, $40 barely put me over half a tank in Sacramento. So, so grateful for these gas prices that have gone down. I just got gas for $3.68 a gallon. And now I'm ready for my lunch shift. It is 10.53. Just to recap on my first shift logged in, I've been saying 9.09, but I just checked my stats. I actually logged in at 9.06, logged out at... 10, ooh, no, I forgot, 10.30 something. Um, so not quite an hour and a half, I believe, and I made $44, five deliveries, and now I am about to log in at 10.55 for the lunch shift. I will be working from 10.55 to 1.30. Let's see what we can get on this Wednesday afternoon. So far, I have not declined a single thing. I'm going to keep these wheels going um, unless the offers are, you know, not worth my time. I'm in um, kind of a busy lunch spot for the Natomas area. It's not the typical place where dashers sit, but over here there is a Subway, a Togo's, a Starbucks, a sushi restaurant, an Indian food restaurant, a Chinese food restaurant, a gourmet sandwich place and a pizza location. So lots of restaurants to choose from. Hopefully I can get something from right here where I'm sitting and we are on to lunch. DoorDash, you are so sneaky. So I declined my first order. Um, dollars per mile, 
It, probably great for most people. 0.8 miles for $5 picking up an alcohol delivery. I declined it just because it's lunchtime and I feel like I can get something bigger than that. So then good old DoorDash stacks that order with a jack-in-the-box order, which is probably a no-tip order. Now I'm being offered $8.50 for 1.3 miles I don't want to decline since it would be declining two deliveries. And if I'm just focusing on dollars per mile, this order definitely far outweighs the criteria. The liquor store and the Jack in the Box are in the parking lot, literally right on the other side of the street. And I won't even have to move my car between the two pickups. So I was hoping to get something bigger right now at the 11 o'clock hour, but we're going to go ahead and take this 850 for 1.3 miles. So, I was going to say, no good deed goes unpunished. That double order for $8.50 took me a half an hour. It's frustrating sometimes, y'all. So, what happened is one, uh, both of the pickups were seamless. Easy, ready, in and out. What happened with the second drop-off, which was two packs of cigarettes from the liquor store to an apartment complex, is this delivery was actually through a third party in California, which is called Saucy, and they um, send their orders to DoorDash for delivery. So customer orders through Saucy, it gets routed to DoorDash. This customer did not have a physical address on her order. It just said the street name and her apartment number. And there are several apartment complexes on this particular street. So I followed the GPS. It's a, an area that I've delivered to hundreds of times. It was the wrong address. I called her when I got there to confirm that she was in building yada yada. She said, no, I'm in an apartment complex named Ranch View something or View, I don't even remember. Not the apartment complex that I was at. And she mentioned that she has a hard time with delivery on a regular basis, which I can understand why. Um, so when I finally found the customer, um, she showed me her phone. Well, first I showed her my phone showing that it didn't have a physical address. And then she showed me her phone um, from the saucy delivery, which definitely showed the physical address. So this third party is not passing enough information through to DoorDash for this customer to get her deliveries. And she said, I have a very hard time getting deliveries over here. And so I showed her why. So hopefully she will um, follow up and get that taken care of. Now, the no deed goes unpunished comment was because her order was $3. Of that $8.50 stack, her portion for her two packs of cigarettes was $3. It took me a lot of time to find her. Um, after, literally after I found her and I was driving away, this popped up, which for me, if you watch my videos, you already know how I feel about customer service and how things come back around. So she tipped me almost $10 for that delivery, which made that order close to $19. Actually, I think it was over $19. So it worked out for half an hour of time to be $19. I'm here at my next pickup, Black Bear Diner. I've already forgotten the stats. I think it's $9.25. I'll put it up here, but I think it's $9.25 for 4.7 miles. And I did um, decline another order, a sushi order, in between um, the cigarette drop-off and this one that was just going way too far for the amount of money that it was offering. So I've declined two orders so far today. L let me get into this Black Bear Diner and get this next order picked up. Too hilarious not to capture. So in the same parking lot, we have this message. 
A smile makes every day brighter. And then a few cars away, over here on this side, we have this. Yikes. <laughs> I'm getting back in my car. It is 11.51. I've been signed in since 10.55. In this hour, I made $27.32. Thankfully for that great tip. Otherwise, this would not be looking like a great hour. Um, I just declined my first upside down order, which in the gig world, that means that the mileage was more than the offer amount. Um, never going to take those, no matter how much I'm trying to protect my acceptance rate. I would say the only exception is if I was far away from my house and I was getting ready to end my shift and I received an order that was taking me almost all the way home. Um, then basically I'm just being paid to drive home. But other than that, I would never take that offer. I'm getting a pop-up now for a Rayleigh shop and deliver. So let's see what that one is looking like just completed the shop portion of a $16.50 four item shop and deliver. The drop off is 6.6 .6 miles away. I was sitting in the parking lot of the grocery store when I received the delivery, so no driving on that side. So 6.6 .6 miles for $16.50. Most of it's freeway miles, which I'm about to jump on the freeway. So let's go get this shop and deliver dropped off. Funny, not funny. After I dropped off the last shop and deliver and I was walking back to my car, I lost my footing on like slippery mud. So it poured down rain all day yesterday. So today everything is drying out. Obviously you can see the sun's out. And I took a tumble. Um, <laughs> it's not happened to me in a long time. And you always hope that when you do something silly that no one sees you. Well, a guy saw me and he didn't even ask if I was okay or anything. Um, I'm sure it didn't look too terrible because my feet just came out from under me and I went down like on my knees. But I'm not a spring chicken anymore, and <laughs> my knees are probably tore up. I don't even know, but got to make that money. So I already had accepted another shop and deliver as I was walking back to my car. 
It's 23 items for $17.50. Um, and I looked at the order and it's actually not really 23 items. Um, one of the items is three units, another one's three units, and another one's four units. So it's more like a 16 um, unit uh, item shop. So even though my knees are dusty, I'm gonna go in and get this shopped. <sighs> so that shop and deliver took, well, I've only got the shop part done, took a long time. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. I need to learn my lesson. If I notice that there are items on the shop list from the deli counter or the hot walk counter, I need to just the order. So I thought I was doing okay. I got, you know, everything in the aisles shopped, finishing way ahead of schedule. And then I see that the customer has a 24 piece ch uh, fried chicken and a tray. Um, I don't even know what the size of the tray is, like um, a serving tray of both rice and chow mein. So inside this Bel Air, they actually have um, a sandwich counter, a deli counter, um, and like a, they call it a hot wok counter, which is basically Chinese food. So I had to wait for the chow mein and rice to be prepared. Um, got everything loaded up on my way to the customer it's 114 i spent like again way too much time in the store so this is going to be my last order for this shift um, i'm not even sure about the numbers i'm not going to lie being in the store so long has me a little bit frazzled plus the fact that <laughs> that i fell down my knee I, I think my right knee is probably kind of road rashed but we'll have to assess the damage when we get home Anyway, um, this is a day in the life of an 80% plus dasher. It was okay for a Wednesday. I'm okay with it. I will post the numbers when I'm home and when I'm finished. Um, could have been better. Definitely could have been worse. I hope you learned something from this right around today. I will say overall that my um, frequency of deliveries I'm getting them pretty much back to back. Whereas when my acceptance rate was in the 70s range, I was waiting quite a while for orders. So just that alone is a thumbs up. I'm about to jump on the freeway, so I will catch you the next time.